Hey, hey, everybody, Z Garcia here. Today I'm taking a look at a small card game about arranging crates smartly. This is Veggies. In Veggies here, each player is going to be drafting cards that are broken down into six different areas, and each of those is going to show either a vegetable or fruit, or a pallet, an empty space, or some mice. You don't want those mice. And then you are going to be playing that in front of you, creating a grid, basically, you know, arranging these uh, different spaces in front of you. At the end of the game, you are trying to, of course, have the highest score possible, and you are going to be scoring your biggest group. Everyone is doing this. So, uh, with a couple of twists to that scoring, by the way, let's go ahead and take a look at how the game works. I'll show you on the table. We'll come on back. I'll tell you what I think of it. Here we're going to be taking a look at a game for two players to set up. We're going to shuffle up the deck. Each player is going to get two cards, and then we are going to reveal another three in the center of the table here. Each player is going to take a look at their two cards, and they are going to play one face up in front of them to begin their area, keeping the other card in their hand. So we are going to both do that, and then we are ready to begin with this player is going to be a going to be our start player. So on your turn, you are going to add one new card to your area here. In order to do that, you are either going to play the one you're holding or one of the three in the display. If you play the one you're holding, you'll replenish it after that. If you play one of these three, you'll replenish it after your turn. And then the other player will go. And we'll do this until every player has eight cards. Uh, and then we score the game, which I'll get to. When you put one out, you will place it either next to the one you played, and you can offset that. You can even turn it upside down like this. As long as the, the grid lines up, you can do that. Or you can cover something up, as much of it as you want to. I could play like this, I could play like that, I could do this, you can do whatever you want to. You are creating groups of the different goods. So I might, on my turn, simply do that. And cover up all three of these with the top half of that card there. The different goods are going to be, you have uh, grapes and strawberries and mushrooms, a few different things, bananas, carrots. There's also pallets that are empty, and then some have mice, and you want to cover those up. So I will do that and cover up those mice, then reveal a new card here for my, uh, my opponent, and they are going to play this one. They are going to do a very similar move like that. Comes back to me. Perhaps I'll do this. Goes back to them. Perhaps they will play uh, the one they're holding, let's say. They want to play this one. So they're going to do that and then draw a replacement. And this continues, like I said, until we are done. Once we are done, then we are going to score. And we each check our area. And we are going to be scoring the, the thing we have the biggest group of. So for me, if it is uh, mushrooms, for example, then I'm going to be scoring mushrooms, and let's say my uh, my display looks something like that. Obviously, that's not eight cards, but let's just say that's what it is. I'm going to count the number of mushrooms, one, two, three, four, five, six, in the biggest group. And I'm going to multiply that times the number of groups. So I've got six, and I've got one group here, that one, and another group here. That's 18 points, multiplying three times six. But if mushrooms are being scored by me, then every player scores mushrooms, so my opponent will also score that. And then everybody will do this, so everybody checks their own biggest group, they'll score that, say strawberries, and so do I. So, again, to reiterate, everyone is checking their biggest group, their biggest group will be scored, and everyone will score that thing. If I am playing a game with three players, and two players' groups, are the same, say, mushrooms for me, and mushrooms for that third player who isn't here right now, and strawberries, then we are all scoring strawberries and mushrooms, just once. You do not score the mushrooms twice, just because two people are scoring them. Once you've figured out everything you're scoring, you will subtract from your score two points for every mouse that is still revealed, and then you've got your final score. If there's a tie, I think fewest mice is, is the tiebreaker there. And it would go to that player. So that's pretty much how the game works. You do not have to 
decide what you're trying to make your biggest group right away. And in fact, you can try to have a couple of groups that are about the same because you can then swing it one way or the other closer to the end of the game. And if there's a tie for your biggest group, you decide which thing you are scoring. That's pretty much the game. All right, so that is veggies. Uh, let's go ahead and talk about it. The first thing I should say is this is a reworking of a of another game, a much, uh, I guess, you know, smaller distribution of a game called, I believe, Small Warehouse. And that game was uh, a little bit different from what I saw online. I found that it was based on that, so I looked it up, and you could read the rules online. So. One of the big differences seems to be the scoring in this one. This idea of you score your biggest and the other player scores their biggest, but then you score each other's as well. Anything that was, you know, that, that is going to count for this game, everyone scores. The original game, the scoring, the way it worked is for every group you had of at least four, you would score that thing and, every, and, and players scored independently of each other. I don't know if I like that original idea better. I think I might because I think this one's a little too gamery. I think this one's a little trickier than the game and the simplicity therein warrants for this for this game. Uh, we'll come around to that a little bit uh, later. Let's go ahead and break this down, shall we? Starting with the theme and the setting, you're stacking and arranging boxes in a warehouse. Not very exciting. Um, you are trying to get rid of the mice. You are trying to make big groups. There's nothing here that I think is going to bring people back to the table. It's also called Veggies. It's just not a very exciting theme or setting, right? The aesthetics. Card quality is good. I don't particularly like the artwork myself. It seems to lack charm. It doesn't seem like a very charming game. The original one for comparison, has a very charming cover, very charming looking cards. These are functional. And in fact, I find the box to be kind of charming. This, this character is appealing to me, carrying his big box, his big burly arms. The cards themselves don't really have a great look to them. I think the, uh, the artwork looks a little bit between hand-drawn and 3D generated, and then I don't really like the look of it too much. The replay value. Seems like there might be some space here for clever play, for subtle play, but that didn't really pan out for me. Uh, the first time I played, I thought, okay, but maybe it's because it's the first play, and I'm missing some subtleties here. I think if you keep the other players on the edge, guessing as to what your big thing is, that's going to be very interesting. It's... Not, it does not make a big difference. It doesn't really pan out. You don't really get to have a ha-ha moment in this one. It just doesn't pan out that way. Game arc. Very quick. The game is uh, extremely fast. It does, however, seem to have a massive last player advantage in which the last player in the game can see exactly before their turn, uh, you know, I'm talking here, ideally like a three-player game. You play two, three. If you play with four, then you're playing in teams. Um, the original game, I think, was a two-player only game, by the way, so keep that in mind. But the last player, playing with three, has a very big advantage. They know exactly what's being scored based on the one player. They know exactly what's being scored based on the other one. And they could, if you wanted to, you could stop the game dead on the very last turn if you can change what thing scores for you and do the math. You know exactly what everybody else is getting, and if I go with the carrots, this is what my score is, that's what your score is, that's what your score is. Okay, that means you're winning. What happens if I go with the mushrooms? And I can swing it one way or the other because I kept them closed. And then I could do the math. So you could do that. This game does not warrant that exactly, but it allows for that and gives the last player a decent amount of power, okay? Don't really like that. Ease of play. The placement rules in this are very easy. I appreciate that. I like that the stacking and the placement rules are very forgiving, very easy. Um, the scoring is not so easy, and again, kind of doesn't really fit the game here. I like the original one, this idea of if you make a big enough group, you score it. Cool. That works for everybody, right? And you don't have to worry about what everybody else is doing. 
yes, the interaction between the players drops, but do you make that up in strategic play? I don't think so. Um, lastly, tactics, luck, strategy. There's some luck as to what gets revealed, but you have some choices. You know, the three cards in front of you, the one you're on the table, the one you're holding, the one you're holding back. Um, generally, play seems pretty obvious. The, th the things you should do and the things you ought to do seem pretty obvious. Um, the main trickery, that twist of the thing that scored is the thing you have the biggest group of, and everybody scores it. Hmm. Just, again seems more fun than it actually ends up being. It doesn't really work out. Another thing I should mention is the original game didn't have the rats. You just had empty spaces, didn't count against you. So this one added a, a penalty as well, as well. So that's that's fine. That's neither here nor there. But um, it just seems like that manipulation, the promise of an interesting idea, the, the you read the scoring and you go, that's weird, eh? And B, Sounds clever, and like I could manipulate that to really uh, deliver an interesting game that still plays in 20 minutes. Whoa. You don't really get you get that second part, the 20 minutes. You don't really get the first part so much. Uh, that's, that's what I found. So there you go. There's also a few rules, ambiguities in the game that I found problematic for how simple the game is. And I'll tell you a couple of them. So the game says, the gameplay is... You draw two, you put one in front of you, and then you play until you've placed eight cards. And I'm not sure if they mean you've placed eight cards after the first one, or if you've placed eight cards including the first one. I think it includes the original placed one, but I don't know. Uh, it also says if you have tied groups at the end of the game, you pick which one you score. Am I supposed to pick before other players pick? Am I supposed to pick simultaneously? Do we do it in turn order? When do I pick? It matters. If somebody else is tied up, it matters that I know what they pick before I pick, or it could matter. Again, that's not really explained, and I think these are all cascading problems from the fact that the original game changed, where these were not issues, at least the second one. You got a group of four or bigger, you score that thing. Done. I don't need to worry about what you're doing, I'm making my groups, I'm trying to score, ideally, maybe a couple of things. The scoring was the same, you know, a group of at least four, biggest group, times separate groups. And so you can end up scoring a couple of things, maybe three, that would be tricky, but maybe three things. With this new checking each other idea, the game loses some clarity. And for a game that's 20 minutes, and it's supposed to be a, a very quick little jolt of fun, it gets bogged down in gamerisms that, that don't seem to benefit this game specifically. It just sounds more complex, is more complex, doesn't really gain anything. So there you go. This one is an okay game, but it's very forgettable. Um, I think I would prefer the original concept a little bit more. It didn't bring anything really memorable, I guess. So it's it's just for a forgettable little card game. There's a lot of games that fill this time period that do something more clever than this, unfortunately. So I would um, ideally stick with two players, I think. And um, yeah, or, or just pick something a little more flashy, a little more interesting. So there you go. Don't hate it. I just, I think I'm going to forget this one pretty quickly. So this is going to get a five out of 10 from me. So there you go. That's going to be veggies, folks. Thanks for checking this out with me. I hope uh, that this was informative and entertaining, maybe, and I will see you on the next one. Take care.